Today we're going to discuss prime and composite numbers. And if you remember from the center page on Friday, it told you what prime and composite numbers were, as well as having them up here on the vocabulary wall. So composite numbers are a number that has more than two factors. Okay? A prime number is a number that has exactly two factors. One in itself. So something to think about. We're going to talk about that down here again when we get there. So let's read the problem. Students are arranging square tables to make one larger rectangular table. If the students want to choose from the greatest number of ways to arrange the table, should they use 12 or 13 square tables? So let's highlight the question, please. We're going to have to start clear up here with if the students want to choose from the greatest number of ways to arrange the tables, should they use 12 or 13 square tables? Now we're going to use a grid to show all of the possible arrangements of 12 and 13 tables. Now they've already started you off. We're going to draw all of the possible arrangements of 12 tables and then we're going to do all of the ones for 13. Okay, we're going to label each one of the drawings with the back of their model so you can see that they did the first one for you. They did 1 times 12 and then they labeled it. What is another way to make 12? Morgan? Okay, so we're going to draw 2 times 6. Just find a spot that you can fit it in there, please. And then once you have it drawn, label it below it, please. 2 times 6. <coughs> Any other ways to make 12? Summaries? Let's do the smaller number first, which would be what? 3 times 4. So come across here. We'll do 3 times 4. So again, you're going to write it below to label it. Are there any other factors of 12? Okay, so let's write the factors of 12 in order from least to greatest up here in this little blue box. What's the first one? One, and then two, three, four, six, and 12. Make sure you put commas between them so we have them. That's how you list the factors. Now, if it said to do factor pairs, you would have wrote 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4, but that's not how it asked for. It wanted you to, what are the factors of 12? You want to list them. So now I have to do 13. So who can tell me what I'm going to draw for 13? Cheyenne? 1 times 13. Okay, 1 times 13. And again, don't forget we need to label it at the bottom. Are there any other ways of making 13? If I do any other factors, is it going to give me the answer of 13? 2 times anything going to give me 13? 3 times anything going to give me 13? Okay. All right. So how many ways were there to do 12 tables? Three, and there's only one for 13. So that means that there are more ways to arrange 12 tables than there are to arrange just 13. And then this is where the prime and composite comes in. A prime number is a whole number that's greater than one that has exactly two factors, one in itself. So 13 would be what? A prime number. Then a composite number is a whole number that is greater than one, that has more than two factors, and look how many factors it has. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means 12 is a composite number. So you have two different ones right here. 12 is a composite number, and 13 is a prime number. So let's write the factors of 12 again down here. They're up here, so all we have to do is copy them. They were one. So 12 is what kind of number? 
composite because it has more than just two factors. And then 13 is a prime number. Now the math talk over here on the right says explain how knowing whether 12 and 13 are prime or composite could have helped you to solve the problem above. If you already know that a number is prime, that's going to tell you what? That you can only do it one way. If you have a composite number, you're going to have many ways. Absolutely. Okay. Do you see this error alert right here in the middle? I kind of pass it over, but it's something we need to pay attention to. It says the same factors in a different order should be counted only once. For example, 3 times 4 and 4 times 3 are the same factor pair. So when God is telling me 4 times 3, we could have used 4 times 3. We just want to make sure we don't use them both. Okay? Because they're the same factor pairs. We don't want to use the same factor pairs twice. Does that make sense? All right. The page, please. <coughs> <laughs> All right, back to divisibility. Something we need to think about a little bit. We can use our divisibility rules to help tell whether a number is prime or composite. If a number is divisible by any number other than one and itself, then the number is composite. You always have to think prime is one in itself. Can you all say that with me? One in itself. So prime, one in itself. Composite is going to have more than that. So we're going to tell whether 51 is prime or composite by thinking about our divisibility rules. So is 51 divisible by 2? No. And what do we know about our divisibility rule with 2? It has to be what? Yeah. Not equal, but even. even. So no, because 51 is what? Yeah. It's not even. When we knew something about the 2, or the divisibility rule of twos, we know that ours have to be even to be able to divide by two. Okay, is 53 divisible by, or excuse me, 51 divisible by three? Yeah. Ah, yes it is, and can somebody tell me why? Now think about what we did for those divis divisibility rules that would make it a little bit easier on you. So then you said no right away because you looked at it and went, nope, it's not. But you have to look into it. Remember the rule we talked about where if I add the two digits in the number and it's divisible by what? Three. Three. So what's five plus one? Six. Is six divisible by three? Yeah. So that tells us that it is a composite number. So we know that five plus one equals six. And 6 is divisible by 3. So that's one of those divisibility rules you may have forgotten. If you're going to divide by 3, add up the digits in the number. If that number that you get is divisible by 3, then you know it is composite. So, it says down here that 51 is divisible by a number other than 1 and 51. So, 51 has more than two factors. So, that makes it what kind of number? Composite. So, 51 is composite. Let's look at the math idea for a second. I wonder if you thought about this says the number 1 is neither prime nor composite since it only has one factor. To get 1, you do what? 1 times 1, which is still only one factor. So in order for it to be prime, it had to be 1 in itself. Well, 1 can't be either because it only has the one factor. Does that make sense? So 1 is not a prime number and 1 is not a composite number. Okay, so think about that as well. All right, let's try the share and show down here. You're going to use the grid to model the factors of 18, and after you've done that, you're going to tell whether 18 is prime or composite. So with your partner, I want you to come and make all of them that you can make 
or 18. All right, who thinks they have all of the ways to make 18? From what was one way you did? Okay, the easy one, one times 18. Almost all the way to the end. Okay, make sure you label. I'm going to put this one on top so I don't run it into something else. What's another way that we did? Cut it in. Okay, two times nine. Label that one. Like what else did you do? Six times three. Okay, let's use the small number first. So let's do three times six. And make sure we label it. Are there any other ways that we can do 18? Okay, so you should have three different models here. So let's read them factors off in order from least to greatest. One, One writing in the low. Two, three, six, nine, eighteen. Alright, so eighteen has more than two factors. So what kind of number is it? Composite. Now, do you think you could have done this without having to draw the models? Yeah, if you know what your factors of 18 are, as long as you know that there is more than just 1 in 18 that is divisible by it, you know that it's going to be a composite number. Okay? So I wanted us to look at these down here at the bottom. We don't have to draw anything down here. It just says to tell whether the number is prime or composite. So you're going to ask yourself the question, does 11 have other factors besides 1 in itself? Does it? Okay, so what does that make it? Prime. And you're going to think the same thing every single time. On number three, you're going to say, does 73 have other factors besides 1 and 73? Something to think about, huh? Can I do two and get it even? Can I do three and get it even? Yes. I can? Yeah. Oh. If I put three into seven, I'm going to have what left? One, because I'm going to do it two times, and I have one left, 13. We already know that 13 is a prime number from before over here. So that means that 73 cannot divide by 3. Okay, 4. So what are we figuring out? There's just 1 and 73. So that makes it prime. Okay, what about 69? Does it have any other factors besides 1 in itself? Yes. Look at these numbers. Is 6 and 9, what is it going to add up to? 15. Is it divisible by 3? Yes. So what's that make it? Composite. So it's using those divisibility rules here as well. And then what about 42? Yes. What can I divide into it? 2. 6 and 7. 2. Do you hear all these that people are saying? So what does that tell us? It's composite. So when you can come up with a lot of different factors, you should know then that it is going to be composite. When you cannot and you're only getting one in itself, it's going to be prime.